A 1.9%, 1.95% growth year on year for, the, for Q1, but uh, a little lower than what we saw in Q4 of 2017, 2.11%. How would you describe the number? Just okay, good, or disappointing? I would describe it as a little disappointing. I mean, uh, we know it's a long haul to diversify, to get our, our growth rate up, but uh, to go backwards a bit from last quarter is, has to count as a disappointment. Now, we've talked a lot on this show, on our, all our live shows, about the momentum of the economic recovery. The fiscal authorities say that we have good momentum, you know, and you know, some uh, economic indicators point to that. If you look at oil prices right now, the external reserves, the stability at the FX markets, and mostly, but it will seem that that's mostly on the uh, monetary uh, authority's side or monetary policy, as it were. But if you look at, I mean, real economic growth, we appear to be lagging in that respect. What is, what is your perspective? Well, I think that the numbers, there's a lot of goodwill and belief uh, and need, uh, understanding for the need for diversification, but I think the numbers that we're seeing show just how hard a task that is to turn a big country around into other industries. So uh, we have lots of clients and entrepreneurs that I know that want to do big things, but there's still just barriers to getting them done uh, done in the country, and our growth rate's not going to hit 5 6 7% until some of those barriers come down. So we just need to keep plugging away at this. Now, speaking about diversification, I'm just taking a look at the non-oil uh, sector growth for the quarter, uh, up 0.76% year on year, but of course still lower than what we saw in Q4 of 2017. And if you just take a look at the services sector too, a little disappointing there, it actually contracted 0.47%, uh, and that's uh, you know, half of the uh, of economic activities in the country. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, a possible drop in consumer spending or consumer uh, purchase in power well I think we all know there's real pressure on uh, you know the, the consumer at every uh, level of, of Nigerian society so I think the drop in the services which as you say is half the economy is a reflection of people don't have enough money to spend I mean they've seen inflation it's come down but it's still over 12 percent and when you don't have money you don't spend and then we're going to see that hit in services right away but how do you see the fiscal authority, especially interpreting this data? I mean, when they go back, when they have the uh, the economic council meetings, how do you see them uh, deliberating over these numbers? Well, I think they're going to be a little bit disappointed, but I mean, they, they they're on the right track. I mean, we've consistently said that one of the biggest issues for the fiscal powers is they need to raise more tax revenue. We've had an extension of the. Uh, voluntary assets income declaration scheme. Uh, we've had the pronouncements that we're really going to be tough on that. The people caught in that net are the higher income earners. They need to pay their tax. That's going to take the, the pressure off. I think the other thing that's going on, though, of course, we have a little bit of a reprieve coming because of the increase in oil prices. No one would have predicted an $80 uh, oil price at this time. I think it's important, though, we keep in mind this can be very temporary, so we need to take advantage of it, clear away some of the debt, some of the arrears in uh, pensions and salaries at the state level, but let's not go back to the bad old days where we're complacent about oil revenue coming in. Now, the expectations that the Nigerian economy this year will grow somewhere around 2.1, 2.2% uh, year on year. I mean, the likes of the IMF, uh, World Bank are forecasting uh, the, the growth in that range. Are we on track for that growth for, for the year? Yeah, I think that's still still the number that's out there. But remember, of course, that our population is growing at 27 so if we grow at 2.1 percent, we're still we're still lagging. So it's just it's just not good enough. We need to we need to unlock the shackles to get to that five, six, seven percent growth rate. And as I said, there are lots of people that want to do things. There's domestic entrepreneurs. I know lots of uh, companies outside of Nigeria that want to do a lot more. They're very close to doing it. But we just to make you know, need to make some more progress on the ease of doing business and building confidence in Nigeria. Uh, I mean, that's a good point you made there. Unlocking you know really unlocking that growth. And I know that that's one issue sure that the MPC uh, who started their two-day meeting today are going to also deliberate on. Uh, I mean, the general consensus is that the MPC will not tinker with the headline rate, especially now that uh, we've seen inflation, you know, significantly and consistently coming down. But of course, uh, those concerns about fiscal uh, activities in the second half of the year, expansionary activities, and the MPC is of the view that uh, now would not be a time for monetary, uh, ex I mean, to expand also on the monetary policy side. But what are, you, what are your thoughts in terms of how the MPC are going to digest this data and what the outcome of the meeting will be tomorrow? Well, I think they're going to, 
come to a similar conclusion that we're coming to here that it's uh, it's not it's not terrible we're not going backwards but we're still sort of in a stationary state but a lot of it depends on the fiscal authorities um, particularly bringing down interest rates requires having a higher tax revenue so if I was the MPC I'd, st- I'd stay the course but I'd also put out the message that we need to have monetary policy and fiscal policy working together. Uh, and that means that the, the fiscal authorities need to make sure they're not overspending as we run into the election year. And it also means the fiscal authorities need to keep the pressure up on increasing our, our tax take. I mean, just back to the issue of unlocking growth. We know that the CBN many times uh, plays the role of the fiscal authorities. I mean, pointing to some of its uh, economic uh, intervention programs, especially in the agriculture uh, sector. And it would appear that I'm just thinking, do you think the CBN might want to take that up a notch just to get that? E- because what the missing piece here is economic growth. All of the policies, both on the monetary and the fiscal side, are not exactly translating into that momentum, that economic growth that's going to move the needle. So on that, from that aspect, what do you think the CBN or the MPC will do? Well, I hope they don't ratchet up these intervention programs because if you really examine them, they're small amounts of money. What we need is large amounts of private capital be deployed. So to give maybe the biggest example, the real estate sector is not working. We need real estate to work. So we need things like land registry, the mortgage system to work. Just creating another intervention fund is not going to fix that. We need to fix the fundamentals. I mean, we're a big country of 200 million. An intervention program from the CBN is just not sufficient. Okay, 